I'm standing in Bethlehem in a cave along the side of the shepherd's field. Mary and Joseph would have come from Nazareth to here to Bethlehem because of the census that was given to them by Herod. The first census actually that was ever given is because Herod wanted to take account of people because he had heard there was going to be a new king of the Jews. But Herod thought he was the king of the Jews. But actually Herod wasn't even a, a Jew. He was an Ammonite, which is so funny. So anyway, Joseph and Mary came. It took them about a week of walking. And the Bible never says anything about a donkey. That's just something that we visualize. But uh, they probably walked all the way from Nazareth to here to Bethlehem. It would have taken them at least seven to eight days. Upon arriving here, the place was super busy because not only was it a census where you had to give account for your family from where you were from, it was also the time of the Feast of Tabernacles, which is a Jewish feast that represents a lot of things. Mary and Joseph came to Bethlehem trying to find a place for Mary and them to, to sleep for the night. Everything was packed. But at the time during the first century, we as Westerners look at those little houses, the little nativity scenes, but actually that's not how it would be. Caves and grottos were actually underneath where people lived. They kept their animals very close to them. They weren't out in a field. They were actually underneath your homes in a cave. So the person, you know, it could have been a family member of Joseph's provided a cave or grotto for Mary and Joseph to dwell in while they did the census and had the baby. So during this time, you see shepherds out on the field, but this wasn't a just normal shepherds. This time of year during the Feast of Tabernacles, they were, Le they were Levitical shepherds. What does that mean? They were shepherds that were groomed to raise the sacrificial lambs. This was a valley right here that they raised the sacrificial lambs for the tabernacle. All these lambs were brought here. They had to be without blemish. They had to be under a year old. They had to be very, very special. And so here, Mary and Joseph would have had to pass these special Levitical shepherds to arrive into Bethlehem. So this could be a cave that actually Jesus was actually born in. We don't know, there's many caves along this hillside, but it, it's not, it doesn't matter if it's the exact cave. It just gives you an example of what a real birthplace of our Lord Jesus would have been like instead of the manger scenes we see all, all year long. Something that's interesting is that the shepherds would have known something significant because when the angels came to them in the fields right out here and they came to see the baby Jesus, he was wrapped in swaddling clothes. So what does that mean? The Hebrewic word has a representation of a special wrapping of these, of these cloths around the baby. It's just like the sacrificial lambs. And they were born, when the baby lamb was getting ready to be born, they would bring him into caves for the birthing. And something a lot of people don't know, they would wrap the baby lambs in swaddling clothes, cloths. And to make sure they, because look at, look at that, how rough this is. They could fall, break a leg, scratch themselves. And don't forget, a sacrificial lamb had to be Un, had to be pure, had to be unblemished. So just like Jesus, when the shepherds came in here and saw that Jesus was wrapped in swaddling cloths, it kind of left a, a, a symbol, you know, they understood that. So you're saying, well, how did he get the swaddling cloths? Well, let's back up a little bit. And Mary's cousin, Elizabeth's husband, Zachariah, was a priest in the, in the temple. And they only had one time that they got to serve to, to do the uh, ashes of prayer at the prayer altar, and it was his time. So Mary showed up at Elizabeth's house, her cousin, six months after she was already pregnant, the Bible says. So that's how we look forward. So when you see people say that um, Jesus was born on December 27th, uh, 25th, he wasn't born at Christmas time. He was actually probably born in September during the Feast of Tabernacles, meaning that he dwelt with us, and that he dwelt among us, because he fulfills all the feast. So how did Jesus get these swaddling cloths? Well, Elizabeth, her cousin, had the, the uh, Levitical priest uh, gowns. After they were soiled and used, they would tear them up and use them for the lambs, the sacrificial lambs. So Elizabeth knew because of her baby John in her belly that this was a holy man. Even she said, blessed are you woman. She knew that Mary was blessed the birth of the baby, the Messiah she was going to have. So I'm sure she blessed him, her, with these swaddling cloths, knowing that he was going to be the, the lamb that's going to save the world. So Mary had the baby, Jesus, wrapped in these swaddling cloths here 
or the lambs would have been protected for the Feast of Tabernacle, the Feast Among Us. And also another thing that they used the swaddling cloths for, after they were used, they would wind them up and use them in the menorah in the temple. The significance of that is Jesus is the light of the world. And it's funny that the swaddling cloths were used for light and also for keeping the lamb safe, or keep our lamb without blemish, because the Bible says he will be unblemished, which is what he was. So you can visualize Mary and Joseph being here and the shepherds being here. And uh, it, it would have just been absolutely wonderful knowing that they knew what was supposed to happen. They knew that this was probably their Messiah, absolutely. It's just amazing that we're standing right here in the cave. This could be their cave, but we get, an ex we get the feel of what it must have been like back then, 2,000 years ago, when our Messiah was born.